Uh, good morning. So I will talk today about um, possible origin for dissipation in uh, niobium cavities, which is localized uh, paramagnetic moments at the surface of niobium. Um, the experiments that proved it and the theory that from this can explain losses in some losses in uh, niobium RF cavities. So this is first a collaboration between a lot of institutions and universities, in particular John Zadzinski from IIT and uh, Gigi Kiewati from GLAB. Um, so my talk will be divided in two parts. The first is experimental evidence, and the second is the theory. Um, this we all know. This slide is just that the screening uh, Meissner current flows on the first 45 or so long nanometers from the surface in which region there is a lot of impurities, defects, oxides, several uh, forms of oxides. Niobium is well known to have really crappy oxide, actually, as compared to other uh, metals. Um, so this is my first. We started with this technique, actually. So many of you have already seen this slide. But for those who didn't, um, this is point contact and then spectroscopy. So you apply the voltage between the gold tip that comes into contact with the surface, niobium samples here, and the gold tip is here. And you use a tunnel, the insulating oxide as a tunnel barrier, so the potential drops here. And you sweep the voltage and measure the current. So you have an IV characteristic or a DIDV if you measure the derivative of the, lock -in, um, of the voltage via a lock-in. And this is what you should obtain for a perfect superconductor. Zero at two Kelvin, um, zero states at the Fermi level, and two quasi particles peaks around the Fermi level, separated by two delta. So, if there were any uh, conductions uh, and dissipation occur with an energy range of h bar omega, which is typically the frequency is 1.5 gigahertz, so it's few micro eV around this point. So. Um, if there were any electrons, non-superconducting uh, pairs, uh, unpaired here, it will participate to the dissipation. So now what do we obtain for real case? Well, we do have, and I will go really fast, uh, a finite density of states at the Fermi level. It's not a perfect superconductor. And it turns out that the best fit we can have is with the Shiba theory, uh, which um, take into account the um, presence of magnetic impurities inside the superconductor. Um, so now this is a little bit more data on hotspot versus cold spot. So hotspot is um, the one who present high field Q slope in the middle field region, and cold spot is uh, no Q slope or very small in the medium field region. And what we do see uh, when we do point contact on several points of each of these samples. So there, has three, there is three uh, cold spot, three hot spots. Is that um, in a hot spot, the major features is that there is some weird spectrum here in black, solid black line, with a peak center at zero. And also, we also found that the gap is, in average, smaller the specific speculating gaps and in cold spots. So what is this peak? Well, so this is um, the same spectrum, the temperature dependence of this of one junction that shows this strong peak at zero with the two quasi particles peaks on the side. So this is a superconductivity and this is something else. And when we kill superconductivity by applying a field, then we are left with this peak at zero. And the temperature dependence of this peak this has been seen before by Wyatts um, on tantalum um, oxide junctions. And when we try to fit this with the Applebaum theory, which um, calculates basically the, what the connectum should look like so with paramagnetic impurities located in the insulator, in the tunnel barrier. So this is a black line here, thick black line. It fits. I mean, very well above 7K, but below 7K there is, so this is uh, green, red, and black. So this is all this curve here. It fits less well at low 
voltage, so here. And Wyatt um, observes the same behavior. Basically, it fits, weight, fits well at high bias and at high temperature, but this is the theory is in dashed line here, and his experiments are slightly out. Um, so this is what, what, what has been observed before, so there is no big news here. And the temperature dependence of the amplitude of this peak uh, fits quite well with uh, Applebaum theory again. So this is for three different junctions. They all fall on the same line. One thing that should be noticed is that this is Wyatt's data. Um, so there is two fitting parameters from these lines, which actually is exponential, uh, logarithmic, sorry, is you have a temperature, I would say, and a coupling constant. Um, and what we found is that the coupling, so the temperature is roughly the same for niobium and tantalum, but the coupling constant is 10 times higher. And this is a clue that something else um, happened with niobium as compared to other uh, tantalum oxide, for instance, uh, impurities, magnetic impurities inside the tunnel barrier. Now, the origin of these magnetic impurities has been postulated a lot, I mean, from many years now, to be due to oxygen vacancies. And this is true for a lot of oxides, vanadium, uh, titanium oxide, and a bunch of other ones uh, which have been measured by different techniques. So now, uh, when we apply a field on this peak, so this is a zoom on this peak, it's split in magnetic field. And the splitting gives you basically the Landy factor, which is here is 3.5. I was kind of surprised to see such a big G factor. I was expecting something close to two for single electrons, non -interact I mean, almost uh, non-interacting. Um, and this has been turned also by Wyatt's. This is quite of the same uh, condo effect problem in the tunnel barrier. This is a definitive proof of localized paramagnetic moments in the niobium oxides. So now we've been uh, with have used EPR, electron paramagnetic uh, resonance, to try to probe these paramagnetic moments. And this is a very recent spectrum. It turns out, in black, this is a measurement. There is a lot of peaks. In red, this is a background of the cavity that they use to measure um, our samples. So this is NB12029. So this is supposedly a sample coming from Keva, the maximum uh, defects of oxygen before switching to NBO2, which is not magnetic. So this should show the highest paramagnetic signal. And um, so we see two G values, one at 3.3 and one at 1.2. Um, no, it's worth noting that we have, this measurement is very recent because they were looking at a completely different region of the spectrum, completely different frequencies on niobium powders, on niobium samples, we gave them, and they were not seeing anything. But recently, and even on this compound, and recently they, were, they realized uh, at IIT, this was done at IIT, that they were looking at the completely wrong part of the spectrum, so they are redoing all the measurement right now. And so there is a, they find two G values that they interpret as two um, configuration of um, uh, oxygen deficient C. Uh, which means one would be insulated from one each other and one would be around in the chains of spin, so one G kind of uh, spin chains. Um, and this value G is closer to what we found before than the other one. Also, it's worth noting that the amplitude of this peak when it's normalized to one is huge. This is like 15%. So this, I mean, on niobium, it's much, much bigger. So this is, and along with the fact that the coupling constant is much stronger, um, this G value here, than in, than in tantalum oxide, this makes us think, and this is a supposition for now, but that we are, when we are measuring by point contact these strong peaks, we are actually above few chains or domains where these uh, oxygen vacancies migrates together to form self-arranged uh, structure. So this is another experimental um, technique squid to measure the magnetism. Uh, 
this is a spectrum of the moment along the applied field, DC field, um, on niobium powders. And this is in red is the background for the niobium poly term. Uh, when you subtract this background, you have a nice paramagnetic Curie-Weiss behavior. Um, and then when, so we did this experiment on a lot of different um, aspect ratio sample, powders, wires, rods, foils, with different chemical treatments, and we plot everything here. M over B is this value it's at four Kelvin. So this is this distance. Plotted to see if there is any correlation with surface or volume, we plotted this as a function of the volume. There were no correlation. As a function of the surface, there is a nice correlation that seems to depend in blue here is for BCP, and in red here is um, UHV anil foil, wire from alpha is are really pure powder from alpha either too. Uh, so it depends, it seems to depend, this dependence on the chemical treatment you apply to the niobium. But the fact that there is a linear dependence proves that this is surface magnetism. So it's correlated with the surface. No, the trick is to know what is the real surface and more, I mean, more exactly what is the real volume of the oxide because you have to normalize by the volume. Um, so this is supposing that the surface is what we measure with a ruler um, or what we can estimate from ACA's, uh, SCM image for the niobium powder. Um, so we estimate the surface here and the distance is a thickness of the oxide which we took five nanometer. It should be on the order of magnitude. And then we can extract a Curie uh, constant, um, sorry, a Curie temperature and a Curie constant and we plot them one versus the other. And this is for different <coughs> electropolishing um, surface treatments. So this is water cut. So this is how we get the samples from Gigi before any uh, treatments. And when we BCP them, they fall right on the BCP lines. Um, so you can see that there is a difference uh, between all this chemical treatment. And this is just in the insect. No treatment is because we had niobium for UHV anneal. One side coat with gold, uh, one side, two sides coat with gold, uh, no. One side or no coating with gold. And it's called, so the surface is half or try, I mean, and it correlates very well, so. And I mean, there is also a niobium powder here sample and a wire somewhere that we measured in the squid. Um, the insert is what Kava obtained. So he took uh, NB, uh, niobium oxide defected with a precise, I mean, with a control amount of defect. NB12029 is one of them, which is this point here. And he plots the uh, Curie temperature versus the Curie constant. And he obtained a linear correlation. Um, which means basically the more moments, the Curie constant is proportional to the concentration of magnetic moment. The more moments, the more, the stronger the correlation, uh, which makes sense. Um, so now, how do we explain this? Look at the scale here, 0 0.2, 0 0.5. We are 10 times higher, at least. So we can explain this if we assume that the volume is completely wrong. Basically, we have a 10 times bigger volume than what we were expecting. And so this change, this shifts the Curry constant down to lower values. And the Curie temperature those stay constant. So which would mean, how come that we have 10 times more volume? Well, first we assume atomically flat surfaces in this estimation of the surface, which is not the case. Um, and we did Raman spectroscopy, AFM, I looked in the literature also for BCP versus EP surface roughness, and it turns out that BCP is more rough than EP, um, between a factor of five or something. And uh, estimate for the non-treatment samples is roughly a factor of 10 uh, if we calculate the uh, roughness uh, influence on the surface. And the thickness, I mean, this is kind of weird because I did a uh, grazing neutron which are extremely sensitive to oxygen and uh, X-ray um, grazing 